Okay, so I hit the I hit the <laughs> I hit the end button prematurely. So just waiting for everybody to log back on. <laughs> hey trouble. Mr. J President, congratulations on your win. I seen that you uh you took the championship, you took the trophy. What was it 20 29 18 7 26 to 23? I did watch it. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to be there. I know Trish explained to you what happened. <laughs> Tay B3 was going on. So uh, we are back to continue our discussion of um, when you're in a relationship and the person hasn't made space for you. So I'm waiting for my co-conspirators to join back on. Um... <laughs> I watched it. I will say that your ribs looked very tasty. I was very upset. What? You know? I'm not going to lie. I was rooting for Trisha. But you know that already. <laughs> the good thing is, because you did it anonymous anonymously, it's not like anybody could um, choose or decide who had made which set of, of ribs. But... Yeah, don't don't ask. I it's I logged on and then for some reason, Kelly. <laughs> for some reason, I don't know. I was thinking that it was because I saw the the end button and the top, not realizing the end button is always at the top. I had a blonde moment, like an actual blonde moment. That's disrespectful. Let me behave myself. I just had a you know, an idiot moment. Mister Holla out. What's going on? Okay, so earlier we were talking about when you're in a relationship and the person hasn't made, um space for you to be in their life and um you know one of the the key points we were discussing is that people get so caught up <laughs> thank you it's the makeup and the lighting the ring light the fabulous ring light sorry the popping and noising your the popping and noising the popping and stuff you're hearing in the background is fireworks because it is canada day today um so for those canadians who are celebrating happy canada day um, so one of the key points that we touched on in the discussion earlier, yeah, the blonde, you don't see it. <laughs> one of the key points that we touched on earlier is that people are so caught up in the love feeling and wanting to continually have that feeling that they prematurely sometimes will say that they need the person to come live with them because they want to have that feeling around them all the time but they haven't made proper provisions for the person to be in their life and for the person to be in their space. And as crazy as this sounds, I have I have counseled and suggested to people that if you're going to, and I understand that sometimes it's not practical, but if you're going to come together to live in the same space, find a different space that doesn't belong to either one of you and come together collectively to build a space together because i i honestly feel like no matter how hard you try and no matter how good your intentions are and no matter how comfortable you want to try to make the other person it's always going to be your space one person or the other it's always going to be that person's space and i always feel like there's the potential for when an argument or a disagreement erupts, for that to become a sticking point. That you've moved into that person's space, right? It's all well and good, but I honestly feel like even within that first year of living together, you need to proactively look for a space that is the two of yours together. So, it wasn't his space that you moved into. It wasn't her space that you moved into. You've both moved into a new space, a new beginning, a fresh start, where you do this collectively together. If that if that doesn't make sense, somebody please let me know. Um, That's why it's always best to just get a new place together. Girl! Okay, you see? So you just let me know that I'm not entirely crazy. I, 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 like I do, I think that that's absolutely the best thing because I do, I feel like people, be, people become so territorial about their space that there's always a sticking point. 
I, I, I don't care who it is. There's always a sticking point because it's like now you have to deal with a person being in your space. And as much as you love them and as much as you wanted to, them to be there, at some point reality sets in that this person is in your space. You have to make room in your closet. You have to make room in your office. You have to make room in your kitchen. You have to get rid of some of your stuff to accommodate this person. You have to change things like if it's a guy and you're used to leaving the toilet seat up all the time because the majority of the time you're, you know what I mean? Like you, it's up because you stand up to pee. Now you have to be mindful to put the toilet seat down. You have to be mindful to not miss and hit the floor. You have to hit the bowl. You have to be mindful of not leaving toothpaste residue in the sink. You have to be mindful of cleaning them. There's so much that you have to be mindful of because you have a person now living in your space because you were so in love and so in the bubble of euphoria that you've requested for this person to come be in your space, but you haven't made proper provision for them to be there. You haven't made room for them. It's either that or... You've made room to, for them for, to the best of your ability, but now you're starting to resent the fact that you've had to make room for them. You're starting to resent the fact that they're in your space. And so now what you end up doing is you try to find spaces within your space that can still just be yours alone. Right? And, it, and it's not to say that it's a situation of where you have a man cave and, you know, it, it, I, I don't even mean it like that. I mean, it's like where you retreat to your space so you can start to feel like it's just you alone the way that it used to be. And the reality is there's no such thing as the way that it used to be. When you get in a relationship, there's no such thing as the way that it used to be. When you get into a relationship, there's no such thing as the way that it used to be. Because now you're a two-person entity. It's not just you by yourself. You can't be single in a full-time relationship. You can't be single in a relationship, period. When you decide that you want to ask someone to come live with you, you need to give it consideration for six months to a year out to start with and think to yourself of all the things that could happen. Have conversations with the person before you ask them to move in. Ask those questions. You know, Pepper Ann Marie was making a joke earlier, but it's true. Ask the person like, listen to me. I was going to be decent and leave you in the chat, but Fox Tycho, Fox Tico, before I tell you to go suck yourself, let me just hide you and block you from my chat because I'm not able. <sighs> <laughs> I I ejected them. I'm not honestly. I'm not. I'm not trying to cuss nobody today. I'm I'm trying to live peacefully and have have blessings and goodness in my heart. So I ejected him from the conversation. But um, before before you ask, <laughs> when I move to look for a house, I already told my queen we'll be looking together for a new place. But that's that's the way that it's supposed to be, you know. Um, I know somebody who <laughs> crazy story. Um, a couple that I know, he, the, the gentleman in the couple looked for a place to live for them and signed his name and his name alone. You heard how I started that off. He looked for a place for them to live and signed his name and his name alone to the mortgage and told her after the fact and said to her, it's okay, like you can decorate. You can you can decorate it any way that you want to. You can get anything that you want. You can do you can you can decorate our you can decorate our home any way that you want to. But you heard the first part of what I said? He went looking for a place for them to live in and signed his name and his name alone to the mortgage, but then tried to assuage her by telling her that she could decorate it any way that he want she wanted to, and he would give her a budget for that. And because they're married, and in the first two years of their marriage, she couldn't really say anything. Because how do you argue and fight that? Because if you decide that you're going to get a lawyer to try to get him to change it, first of all, you have to have the conversation with him about why he did that and hope that that doesn't turn into an argument. 
And then you have to have the follow-up conversation about getting her name on the mortgage and hope that that doesn't become an argument. And then what do you do? How about moving to a house for the first time together? Do you think it should be something smaller at first? Why is he looking for a spot for them? Who child the fuckery? She should have been on it. You know, okay, so starting at TV3, do I think, um, I think that it should be a space that's manageable for both of you. Um, you know, I think you need to look at your family dynamics and what it is that you're planning for your future. If you're not planning on having children for the first, you know, three to five years of your relationship or the first year to three years of your relationship, get a small place, get a two bedroom, a two bedroom place. I, I ideally always say, sorry, my cat is trying to eat something she's not supposed to eat. I ideally always say that there should be, um, if you can find a, th a reasonable three bedroom place, then do that. The reason I say that is because there should be a space that's both of yours and then each of you should have your own space. I really think that people underestimate the importance. It's not gunshot, it's fireworks. <laughs> Close my window. I think that people really underestimate the importance of having a space that's your own within the collective space. And I know financially that's not always practical to do, but if you can do it, do it. Um, so back to the couple that I know. Yeah, she should have been on it. But I mean, how are you? How can you be on it or be informed about something that the person never talks to you about? And his rationale was, you know, he just, you know, he saw some place. He he liked it. He knew that she would like it and she would be okay. And he made sure that it had whatever foolishness that he that he told her. You know, and he made some sort of like half-assed apology, but at no point did he offer to get the mortgage changed to include her name. Yeah. <laughs> Me, as much as we're married within the first year, two years, that's an automatic deal breaker. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, he wasn't trying to make room for her in his life. He knew that he wanted to be in control. And in the event that something happened where their relationship didn't work out, he would be okay. And she could just move back to wherever she was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tay B3, if she knew what he was going to look for a house, she, she knows she needs to be there to sign. No, he never told her that he was looking for a place. Sorry, let me not lie. He said to her, like, so they both lived in separate places. And then she was saying that, you know, instead of her, she, like, she said that she could move in with him. And while they were living there, they could look for a place together. And he just said to her one day, oh, that's okay. You don't have to do that. I bought a place for us. And she's like, what do you mean you bought a place for us? He's like, well, we talked about it before that you were going to move in here. But then I was thinking like, instead of, you know, you moving here, then us having to move again, I just went ahead and bought a place for us and then we can just move there. That's, that was the conversation. There was no pre-discussion. There was no, you know what I mean? So the, the pre-conversation was that she was going to move into where he lived. And from there, they would look for a place together. And that didn't happen. He just skipped that middle step and went, you know, he, he just moved straight ahead with it. Um, yeah, it was, that was a little bit crazy. Um, that's precisely what it sounds like. He wanted full control of the living situation. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... I don't know if he wanted, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that it's, it was a security issue because again, you know, people, people never really stop to think about that long-term effect of what it's going to be like when we live together. And, you know, as much as, I don't know, maybe I'm too new school or too new age, but I honestly feel like people should live together before they get married. It's the same way that I think that there should be conversations about intimacy before people get married. Because what's happening now is that, again, people people are, are, are resting their marriages solely on the laurels of love, thinking that this is like the 50s and 60s when our parents and our grandparents got married, where you just kind of stayed. Whether you were miserable or not, whether you could make it work or not, 
people just stayed and that is not the age that we live in anymore and not to say that that should be a knock and people talk about oh millennials are indecisive and it doesn't have anything to do with that it's the simple fact that people have choices now that they didn't have 40 and 50 years ago and even when you take it just from the perspective of women women have choices that they didn't have 40 and 50 years ago 40 50 60 years ago you more often than not had to get married in order to have any sort of sustainable life in order to come out of your parents home in order to be independent or have anything in your life you had to get married and take whatever came with that and now because the world is advanced and the world is different and, and less people are getting married because they're realizing that they don't have to get married in order to have meaningful and healthy and long-term relationships people are not getting married as frequently but I really and truly truly believe that people should live together for a period of time before deciding to get married. I, I'm, I've seen way too mar many marriages crumble and fall apart because people are so focused on the love aspect of the relationship rather than the longevity of the relationship. And I, I will say it till the day that I die, love alone cannot sustain a relationship just the way that good sex alone cannot sustain a relationship. It's impossible. There are many facets to making a relationship work and it's more than one thing. Are, are you willing to compromise? If you're not and you're staunch and you're stuck in the way that you are because this is just how I am, I love them but I'm not gonna change my ways because this is just how I am, that sh that, how is that gonna work? How is that gonna work? Because you don't believe in communication, you don't believe in compromise but you have great sex and you love her. Okay, but now what? <laughs> uh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, Mr. Wright, he made it clear to me that he didn't value her input regarding searching for a new space. That woman should have been involved in the house hunting process. Absolutely. Mr. Mass Maine, <laughs> cooking with flavors and even then extensive conversation still cannot be enough because you can have all the right conversation and still end up in a fucked up situation. Ab absolutely. You know, um, I don't know. Like, I, I know that there are people who have older traditional values and, and I respect that. I really do. Um, but I, I just feel like we live in a different age now. We, we live in an age where, you know, people will lie, um, and, and have this whole, social media persona that someone has fallen in love with and they get into a relationship with that person only to find out that that person in real life and in real time is not that person you know um <laughs> yeah it's Ah, I was thinking about a personal story, which I may or may not share. I'm, I'm going to think about it in a minute. Um, Mr. Cooking with Flavors, I'm all about being in love, but I need to know that you trust me to be the man I'm striving to be. Um, you need to explain more of what that means. Because a person can trust you and support you, but then what are they getting in return for that trust and support? Sex can be bomb -tacular. If we're not vibing, we're not going to last. <laughs> oh, Keely, you had made a comment. I got to stroll way back up for that. Sorry. Um, life with Keely, but doesn't the house they live in become marital property anyways in the event something happens? That part, I don't know um, for the simple fact that, like I said, he signed the mortgage without her. Um, and I don't, I don't know if... I mean, she's fucked if she signed a prenup, that she gets nothing. But I don't, I don't necessarily know that um, she has rights to the property because they got married. I'm not, I'm not honestly not sure how that works. Um, so what I was gonna say is, from my own personal experience, um, I was in a four-year relationship from 2012 to 2016, and um, this was somebody that I met on social media. And, you know, we spent a really long time, we spent a, the better part of a year getting to know one another. Um, we lived in two different cities. We talked every day. We FaceTimed every day. Um, you know, we spent time together in the ways that we could. 
and you know the first time I went to go see him like it was great and you know the sex was great and the conversation was great and everything was wonderful and then um we started talking about planning our wedding and we started talking about getting married and all this good jazz and um if the house was purchased during the marriage it's their house name on it or not it'll just be a task during the separation well that's exactly it you know what i mean like fighting somebody during separation for property or for half of that money you know if he's got a really good lawyer and she doesn't she ain't getting shit whether it's marital property or not um you know anyway uh so yeah we were together and um he did something similar to that so he's like oh you know he's gonna look for a space for us i'm like oh well, just wait like i'll you know when i come into the city in a couple of weeks we can look together at different property in this kind of and the third and one day in that time frame sorry my live paused i don't know what happened um so within that time frame i was supposed to go uh like two weeks later after we had that initial conversation and then he kind of um pushed back the time so it was like maybe three weeks before i saw him and in that three weeks period in that three week time frame he didn't let me know he went and looked at um a couple of properties and purchased one and then told me after the fact and so i was like okay <laughs> You know, so then over the course of like another week or so, he was working on like painting and, and getting the place set up and this and, and, and what have you. And, you know, I remember the first time I went to go visit and it just didn't feel right. Like I brought stuff there. I had stuff there and he's like, oh, you know, let's go, you know, pick stuff out, whatever it is that you um, want to get for our space. And like I, I kept saying to him, like, this doesn't feel like our space sorry mr right sex bomb sex should be the icing on the cake but if you authentically love someone there are abundance of things including being attentive to the long term that should be considered no you're not off topic um that all goes into the way that i think like making room for the person um anyway so after you know spending time in what started to feel like his space and his home and all this kind of stuff like it just started to not feel um i started to feel less and less welcomed and he never said it but it just started to be a feeling like it was you know it was his space so like i would purchase something and say like it was the bathroom towels and then when i would come back the bathroom towels would be replaced by towels that he liked you know and it, i don't know it just became this holy really big thing and so then when i talked to him about it you know, his response was, oh, I don't see why you're making such a big deal about it. You know, I'm the one I'm the one who put up my money to get a place for us. And I said to him, that's exactly the point. You're the one who put up the, your money to get a place. That's your place. I'm just a guest in your home. And he tried to convince me. And the more that he tried to convince me, it started to sound like I don't know if you guys remember the Charlie Brown cartoon. Like he was just talking for the sake of talking. Like he was trying to convince me of something that I couldn't be convinced of. Um, suffice to say, after four years, I was just like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. There was a lot of other things that happened in between, but over time, the person who I started dating, he was no longer that person. Like he really and truly became, um, someone else. And it was one of those weird things where, you know, it, it didn't feel like he had made room for me in his life. And so I'm going to say again, it's, I think it's really important that if you're in a relationship with someone where you guys are looking at moving in together or you've already moved in together, move out of that place and find a place that the two of you have gotten together so that it's your space, not one of you moving into the other person's space. Um, cooking with flavors. I need to know you click with the house. I'm trying to go round with you in each room. So please give me your input. I agree. Um, and, and that's ultimately the way that it should be, but you know, it doesn't always happen that way. And then you also get situations where, you know, if, if it's a, the gentleman who has his home or even the woman, if, if, who, sorry, 
whichever one person has their space and the other person has moved in, you know, sometimes as much as they've agreed that, you know, yes, we can look for a new place together, a space that's ours collectively, they may turn around and say to you, you know what, let's just stay here. We're already here. We're already settled in. You know, if, if we move, we're going to have to pack boxes and we're going to have to, you know, get everything reorganized and paint. They'll make every excuse under the moon to not move from what's comfortable for them. And that's a problem, especially if they're unwilling to make space for you. Right. If you if you're living with someone where it's like pulling teeth to get them to make room for you, you need to pay attention to that. Because if the person, it, again, love is not enough to sustain a relationship. And please don't misunderstand me in thinking that I'm saying that love isn't important. Love is absolutely important, but love cannot, love alone cannot sustain a relationship. There are a lot of people who are in love with the person that they're with, but don't like that person. Don't wanna spend time with that person, don't want to go out with that person. They're not interested in having any sort of in-depth or meaningful conversations with that person. They love them and they're happy that they have the person in their life. They just don't like the person enough to really want to be with the person and spend time with the person. You, you could move into a situation where you've moved into a home with a person and as much as they love you, they're unwilling to make space for you in their home because it's theirs. <laughs> And, and you have grown people who have that childish mentality and that childish attitude. Well, I mean, like you're already here. Like, what else do you need? I moved you in. What else do you need? I don't know. Some closet space, some place to put my shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I think of it like this. If the person has like a full sized walk-in closet where there's like, let's say there's, you know, four racks and two dressers and they're willing to give me one drawer out of one dresser and maybe one rack, that's gonna be a problem. You knew that I was coming. This wasn't something where I just showed up on your doorstep and said, hey, I'm moving in. You asked me to come and you knew that I was coming. Make a appropriate space for me. And if you don't know what that looks like, ask me what I need. Ask me what I need. At AJ, that sounds like love that is more so platonic than romantic. Which, which sounds more like platonic than romantic? Oh, if, if you love the person, but you don't like them, there, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a balance. Like think about people in your life that you love, like out of, outside of romantic relationships, right? Think about people in your life that you love because they are people in your life, th they're family, they're longstanding friends, it's your cousin, it's your whoever, but you can't stand that person and you can't stand to be around that person. Now imagine that being a full-time relationship. You're, you're in a relationship with a person that you genuinely love because you've, you've developed feelings for this person over a long period of time. You have history with this person. You have a relationship with this person, but you don't like the person. You can't have a decent conversation with the person because they're always up in arms and they feel like everything is an argument. You don't spend time with this person because... You know, you don't enjoy the same sort of things or even if you're willing to try to learn about the things that that person enjoys, they're unwilling to let you learn about the things that they enjoy. And so there's a pushback with spending time for you. Sp sorry, spending time with you. You know, you're, you're in a relationship with a person where you have to try to schedule time to be with them because they're busy, you know, with their friends. They're busy with their social clubs. They're busy with, you know, whatever it is that they do outside of the home. You know, think about being in a relationship with someone where you have to schedule sex because, you know, it's inconvenient for the person that you're with who loves you. And you're supposed to sit down and be content with these things or be content with the relationship because you're in the relationship with the person, because they've told you that they love you, because they tell you things like, oh, I can't do without you. I can't see my life without you, life without you. I want to spend the rest of my life. But they haven't thought about what spending the rest of their life with you is actually going to look like to the extent where they're willing to make room for you, not accommodations for you, but make actual room and effort for you to be in their life. You can love the person, but I guarantee you're not gonna like that person very much. 
Uh, Mustafa, thank you very much for the compliment. Mr. Wright, I refuse to be in a relationship with a person I don't like and love. I did that unintentionally. It is insane. Absolutely. Uh, TB3, people just spout words and not actions. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. You know, sometimes you have people who will say whatever it is that they feel like they need to say in order to get you to come to be with them because it makes them feel good. But they're not willing to sacrifice. They're not willing to plan. They're not willing to open up. They're not willing to accommodate. They're not willing to give. They're not willing to budge. They're not willing to really do much of anything except have you in their life because it makes them feel good. And that's not a good relationship. That, that, that's a toxic relationship. Again, if, if I have to ask you to spend time with me, that's a problem. Why do you not want to spend time with me? You asked me to come live here and come be with you. And now that I'm here, you don't want to spend time with me? Man, I could have just stayed where the hell I was. You understand what I said? Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. If, if, you're, if you're going to be in a relationship with a person, really and truly be in a relationship with a person, you have to make space for that person to be in your life. You have to make room for that person to be in your life. Otherwise, leave them be and let them stay where they are. Don't ask someone to come live with you when you're not willing to make room for them. Don't ask someone to come be in your space with you when you're unwilling to make room for them. Don't ask someone to come join in love with you if you're not willing to make room for them in your life, it just doesn't make any sense. You're selfish. You're doing that for selfish reasons because you know, you you know that they're always going to be there in those moments when you need to feel good. You know, you know that they've given up everything and they have nowhere else to go and they have nothing else but you because you've designed it that way. And now you're kind of like dangling a carrot in front of them whenever you feel like it's convenient for you. You know, you, you can't, Use people as pawns and have people in your life for feel-good moments just because it feels good to you. It's selfish. It's absolutely selfish. Sorry. Whew. I'm going to take me a sip of water. <laughs> Mr. Wright, Mr. Planet 85, what's up, Guan? Uh, Mr. Wright, I'm in a relationship, so I can't say what I was going to. Nope, don't say it. But a man who refuses to spend proper time with you is both blind and insatiably remedial. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. You know, it's, it's a weird thing to be in any kind of relationship with someone, especially a, like a meaningful, loving relationship where you have to ask the person to make room for you. And, and that's in a physical space and in a mental and emotional space as well. You know, having to ask a person to spend time with you, having to ask a person to be affectionate with you, having to ask a person for, um, you know, things that you, basic things that you may need around the house, having to ask the person to make space for you to put your things in the home, having to ask the person to stop saying my house and say our house, having to ask the person to add your name to, you know, the mortgage, having to ask. Like having to ask somebody to do those things, it's emotionally and mentally draining. And it's, it's some kind of weird psychological warfare. Because if you're in a loving and meaningful relationship, especially where that person has asked you to come live with them, you shouldn't have to ask for those things. Those things should just be a given. And again, if, you, if you're going to ask somebody, if you're going to ask the person that you love and want to be in a relationship with to come live with you, make space for that person. Make room for that person. Not accommodation, because you're not a hotel and they're not a guest. Make proper room and proper space for that person to be in your life. So be mindful of saying things like mine versus ours. Instead of saying my versus our, <laughs> instead of, you know, thinking in an I headspace, you need to think in a we headspace. And it's, it's, it's strange to me when I, when I listen to couples or I've talked to couples where, you know, one of the persons uses a lot of I language instead of we language. I always think to myself like, Britta, 
do you know that you're married? Like, do you know that you're in a whole long-term committed on paper before the eyes of God and family and loved ones committed relationship? How are you still thinking in a single headspace? You know, and it, it's not those moments of, you know, like I did something like this. It's like, well, um, you know, the, the car is mine. So I'm sorry, what? The car is belonging to the Tua Uno because you both live there and there's only one car. So what are you expecting her to do? Take the bus, especially when you're at home and the car's sitting down in the garage. And, but you have people who are in relationships that think that way. They feel like, okay, well, I've asked you to come live with me and I've made space for you to be here. But it's things like that. Like, you know, you don't, you know, your, your significant other isn't going anywhere, but you have to ask them if you can take the car instead of being able to say to the person, um, I'm going to go out for a couple of, uh, I'm going to go out for a little bit. You know what I mean? Knowing that you're going to take the car. You know what I mean? Like there's a very difference between very different. It's very different with having to, Ask someone versus being able to tell someone. And as an adult, in, a, in, in an adult relationship, you shouldn't have to be asking somebody for basic things. You should be able to tell them that you need basic things without it being a fight, argument, or question. Uh, once you've chosen to be in a relationship, you should ask yourself if you can give everything to keep someone happy and well. Absolutely. Um, yo, AJ, I literally just had this dialogue with someone recently. The words we speak say a lot. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. And like I said, I, I feel like people, sorry, I'm a weird person. I'm scratching my arm with my, I feel like people don't give enough, um, thought, time and consideration to planning for having somebody in their life. People, I think people just think that there's this sort of natural way that things just fall into place and really and truly relationships take work relationships take effort relationships are a full-time job they don't just make themselves work uh life with keely i remember being with a guy and i wanted to spend time with him and he told me that i shouldn't be relying on him for happiness Woo! yeah so <laughs> Everyone should have the ability to make themselves happy. But the point of being in a relationship with someone that you love who makes you happy is that person is also a source of happiness for you. And again, I completely agree. It's like, if I have to ask you to spend time with you, if I have to try to schedule and fit myself into your life to spend time with you, that's going to be a problem. You know, if, if you're telling me that I shouldn't rely on you for happiness, I get it from the perspective that, you know, y y both people have to be happy and come together to have a mutual happiness. But if you're unwilling to spend time with me and you are part of my joy, how does that, how does that work? How does that help? You know, especially if I'm in a situation where if I've uprooted my life and I've left to be with you in a place where you're the only person that I know, it's not to necessarily say that I can't do things on my own that make me happy. But if you're part of my happiness and you're part of my joy, am I just supposed to not expect that you're no longer going to be that? Because, <laughs> woo, guy. Yeah, I can't. Um... <laughs> Mr. Wright, he needs to have a brick lodged in his temple. <laughs> you know, honestly, people people say the most inconsiderate things because again, they haven't they haven't made room for you in their life. You know, it's all well and good when you are filling in the blanks for them with their happiness, but they're unwilling to accommodate. They're unwilling to support. They're unwilling to be involved in your happiness. And that is selfish on a whole other level that I just don't understand. Um, both people should have their own lives, this I agree, but wanting to spend time, absolutely. It, it should never be a situation where you have to ask this person to spend time with you. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're the person I'm in a relationship with. Who am I supposed to be spending time with if not you? And it's not to say that all your time has to rely on the person. I know that that's not what you're saying. But again, if you're if you're my husband, if you are my wife, if you're my significant other, if you're my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my whoever, even if you have no titles, but you're in a, in a committed relationship, if you're not part of my happiness and joy, why am I with you? What's the point? Like, you know what I mean? 
Um, he truly needs to be single until his psyche makes a major divine conversion. People of that nature are narcissistic and controlling. Mr. Right, you said a, excuse my mouth, a motherfucking word. Let me take a sip of my water. And the sad thing is, people like that are remiss to change. People like that, they're, they're stuck in the way that they think and they're stuck in their beliefs. And a person like that would be very hard pressed to change. And and the craziest thing is, the, peop, the someone like that will make you feel like something's wrong with you for wanting to spend time with them. A person like that will make you feel like like something's wrong with you for one for wanting to spend time with them again if i'm in a committed relationship with you and you are part of my happiness how am i not supposed to want to spend time with you uh, hi tesh send shiva whatever you need to go tell your mom that she's got nice boobs like guy for real sorry i ejected him from the conversation i don't know what is <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with people and what everybody's on today. I swear these people live in countries where women don't have breasts. <laughs> you see me looking sideways? I honestly feel like they live in countries where people don't have breasts. The breast fascination, again, I, sorry, we completely digress for a moment, but I don't know if it's just because I have them and they're with me all day, every day, but I don't understand it. You have people who don't know you from anywhere that come into your life to, to ask you to show them. Sir, why the hell would I show you my breasts, my ass, or any other part of my body that you can't visually see right now? Are you dumb? That's rhetorical because clearly you are, but like seriously? See, because people want me to sin my soul and cuss and carry on like I am crazy and i'm not doing that today anyhow um i don't know if anyone has anything else that they want to say on the subject um but yeah the you know the resonating um point in the conversation is that if you're gonna ask someone to move in with you if you're gonna ask someone to live with you you need to make space in your life for that person you need to make appropriate room in your life for that person and not in the kind of way that you're accommodating a guest because they're not a guest if you've asked someone to come live with you you need to think about further out than six months to a year because you need to make that person feel welcome you need to make that person feel included you need to make that person feel like you know this is no longer my space this is our space and you need to be mindful of stop not using words like mine because it's not it's yours it's ours um mr wright i think these men from these <laughs> ah! um life with keely so should there be a time frame before leaving um honestly i don't know like I always, I always put it to, like, as a comparison to when our parents got married and our grandparents got married. And people stayed in bad situations and bad relationships because there wasn't anything else for them to do, you know? And it's not to say that you shouldn't put up a fight for your relationship, but you need to weigh what it is that you're fighting for and the person that you're fighting against. Because really and truly, if you're married to someone, you shouldn't be fighting that person to spend time with them. You shouldn't be fighting that person for love. You shouldn't be fighting that person for intimacy. You shouldn't be fighting that person to have meaningful conversation. You shouldn't be fighting that person to love you. That's their responsibility. That's what they committed to. That's what got you to the point that you're at, you know? So I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to determine how long a person should stay and fight, but you have to look at what it, what, what it, what it costs you emotionally and mentally to keep fighting that fight. I was just about to ask that um, a right or wrong time frame because isn't love supposed to be patient and kind also not one sided uh, Mr. Wright I think once the pattern becomes noticeable you have to bring it up in dialogue once it becomes a bother it needs to be brought up to their attention um, when does it stop being patient and when does someone start taking you for granted you see Pepper and Marie I love you 
because that becomes the question. How long do you be, do you stay patient? How, you know, and I understand that love is patient and love is kind and all those kind of good things. But when love is one sided and that person is unwilling to give back, how long do you stay? How long do you be patient? How long do you wait before you realize that that person is not even not wanting to change? They're unwilling to change. And when someone has an unwillingness to do right by you, that's a problem. Right? That person doesn't respect you. That person doesn't value you. You know, for them, yes, they can say that they love you, but it's not just about the word love. Is that person proactively trying to show you that they love you? Is that person proactively making room for you in their life? Is that person proactively engaged in your relationship and engaged in loving you and engaged in being supportive? Especially when you're in a situation where you know what I mean? Like you've, you've, you've transitioned your life or you've moved or that person's asked you to come be there. You know what I mean? You've, you've, you've left the, the, the house that you lived in, you know, you even left the job that you lived in and, and you've gotten another job to be closer to where they live because, the, and, and they're still using words like my house. They're still using terms like my car. They're still using terms like mine, 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 mine. That person's not considering you. And at some point, at some point, you know, when does it stop being, oh, well, this is just how I am. Nah, listen to me. <laughs> when a person continually wants to tell you, well, this is just how they are, you need to pay attention to that because they're telling you that they're not going to change because that's just how they are. Uh, Mr. Wright, if there's no visible effort to change to make sure that you're happy, you have to realize that they do not see your worth or value as a person. Planet 85, when love is one-sided, bye. The thing is, it's like... The old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. There's no amount of love that you can love a person into loving you back. There's no amount of love that you can love a person into loving you back. Because love is not just the word, it's in the actions. It's in the way that the person considers you. It's in the way that the person has made room for you in their life. It cannot always be you trying to lead that horse to water because it can stand up there the whole entire time and not bother to drink the water. Effort is supposed to be on both sides. You, you can't keep trying to make the person love you the way that you want to be loved if they're unwilling to do so, right? It's like if you do everything that you possibly can to be considerate of the person, to love the person, to, to you know, to, to figure out their love languages and to love them the way that they want to be loved versus the way that you want to love them. If you are considerate to them, if you are kind, if you are patient and all those things, and there is no reciprocity at all, just because they're able to say, well, you know, I love you. Nah, fam, the way that you're moving with me does not denote love in any way, shape or form. I just actually pictured the word. <laughs> you know, the biggest problem I think with, with us just as people is that we have to, we have to take the failure factor out of our decision making. And when I say that, I mean, you know, we feel like if we stop trying that we're giving up as opposed to we are deciding to preserve our peace. We are deciding to put our mental and emotional wellness first after giving so much to trying to support another person's mental and emotional wellness when we're getting nothing in return. Relationships are supposed to be about balance. And I don't mean that a 50-50 balance because I don't believe that there's such a thing. There are times where it'll be 80-20. There are times where it'll be 90-10. There are times where it'll be 50-50. There are times where it'll be 60-40, 33-66, what, you know, whatever it is or 30, whatever, right? Um, but but the point is that there is supposed to be a balance of some kind and there's supposed to be effort on both person's parts. And if there is no reciprocity and the relationship is one-sided and that person is unwilling to change, they're unwilling to budge, or if they do change, like it's very short-lived, they'll kind of like do it for a couple of weeks and then go right back to being what they are instead of making a consistent effort to continue to do those things and actively work at the relationship, that's a problem. 
So then the question becomes, how much longer do you want to be patient? You can't love a person into loving you. You cannot love a person into loving you. Don't worry, Mr. Wright. I'm going to eject him from the conversation. I'm not able for nobody tonight. Man, the amount of people that I've had to hide <laughs> and kick out of my life tonight. Woo! So, that's a word. That is a word. Who are these people, girl? I don't know who these damn people are. And it's funny because when I, when I ended the first live... In my DM, in that section of approving messages, I think there was like 10 messages. So somehow over the course of the first set of conversations, people left the live to go private message me thinking somehow that I'm going to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> Don, my block list is crazy. I went and looked at it the other day. I'm like, who are these fucking people? Who are all these people? But then I realized that I block a lot of people from the lives and they kind of go into that section <laughs> where they can't come back and they cannot uh, join the discussion. So um, yeah, unfortunately it is not idiot safe. Uh, when I when I block one person, somebody else comes and fills that spot. Yeah, it's eternal. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I feel like this was a very heavy discussion. Um, I don't know if we want to keep going with it, but um, to, to life with Keely, I know you had asked the question, like, you know, at, at one point, at what, what point do you stop? Is love not supposed to be patient and kind and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> um, it is, you know, but there also comes a point where if there's no reciprocity, then that, that love is one-sided and then who are you loving? Right? Love is supposed to be a two-way street. And again, I, I don't believe that there's such a thing as 50-50 because sometimes, you know, there are situations where, like I said, it's 75-25, it's 60-40, you may be having a bad day and you need 90% love and he only requires 10 or whatever the case may be, right? But even within those numbers, that's there, that's still a balance and, and both people are making a concerned effort. When one person is unwilling to make an effort, when one person is consumed with themselves and themselves only, when one person is unwilling to make room for you in their life, when one person is unwilling to make the effort, that's not a relationship. That's one-sided. And then you have to decide for yourself, how much can your emotional and mental stability take? At some point, you hit a brick wall. At, at some point, you know, it becomes too much. At, at some point, you have to say, you know what? I am worth more than this. At some point, you have to say to yourself, I deserve better than this. At some point, you have to say to yourself, the word love is not enough. And I, and I, I keep saying, and I will say again and again, love is not enough to sustain a relationship especially when there's no action or intention behind that word. You, you can't tell me that you love me and everything in your actions counters that. You tell me that you love me, but you won't spend time with me. You tell me that you love me, but we're never intimate. You tell me that you love me, but I have to keep begging you to say, okay, like, you know, can we play, could we, could we go to a movie together? Let's go for a walk together, you know, but you're always brushing me to the side because you always have something else to do. Like, I, what is the point then? Fuck, I might as well be single if that's the case. Being single in a relationship makes no sense. What's the point of being in the relationship? You could just be by yourself. And and, and people need to stop thinking of it as, as a failure. Like, oh, I failed my relationship. Oh, my marriage didn't work out. Oh, I failed at this. It has nothing to do with failure. It has nothing to do with that. If, if, you've, if you've given 110%, what are you failing at? You can't make the other person do what they don't want to do. You can't force a person to love you because you love them. You can't make a person love you more be by loving them more. It's impossible. The only thing that changes a person is that person wanting to change. You can be the catalyst. You can be the encouragement. You can be, you know, the support. You can be all of those things. But ultimately, that decision rests with that person. And if they're unwilling to change, you can't make them change. You cannot love a person into loving you. Anyhow. That's my rant for the day. <laughs> ah, um, Tabi three. That is why I want to control my man's thought, girl. 
<laughs> Would that be your superpower if you had a superpower? <laughs> Oh my goodness me. Um, I don't know how much more time we've got. Let me look at this. Oops. Nope. Don't do that. Uh, I think we've got like six minutes or something. Um, anyhow, I'm going to wind down the discussion. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone who participated. Um, you guys who cuss people for me. I love you guys. <laughs> the support is so phenomenal. Um, and I appreciate you. Everyone who participated in the discussion, everyone who gave of themselves everyone who shared everyone who commented i appreciate you guys a lot um you know these discussions are nothing without you and wet wednesdays are nothing without you um so these will be posted for a couple of days and then of course i always take them down and move them over to my youtube channel so if you're ever looking for any of the old wet wednesday discussions um you can find them on youtube at the pum pum chronicles podcast of course i am your host aj badass jones um i have live discussions happening um every wednesday and then once a week i also wouldn't that be amazing knowing what they're feeling girl i'd be scared <laughs> um once a week i drop a podcast episode um so in the next couple of weeks i'll be doing a love jones episode i also launched a patreon uh i'm trying to figure out how to get it out there more um because it's restricted because it, it's listed under adult content even though there really isn't like any sort of explicit adult content so we're trying to figure out um my friend and business manager keely and i are trying to figure out how to get that changed um so you know support patreon there are different tiers that range from five dollars up to a thousand dollars and the thousand dollars gets you a whole lot <laughs> but you know you can support for as little as five dollars a month um and that keeps the podcast going that helps me in terms of you know making sure that my team is compensated and making sure that i'm able to continue to bring you guys great contents um but outside of that in the meantime and in between time i appreciate you all <laughs> um yeah and that's pretty much it so i hope that everyone is keeping well i know that some quarantine restrictions have lifted but you know try to stay safe out there and uh don't run amok in the streets with the craziness black lives matter all day every day each and every minute of the day never forget that um there are a number of different petitions for a number of different people who you know were trying in the world to get a call to order for the different atrocities that have been committed against black people so um you know i post a lot of stuff in my stories and then i forward a lot of stuff that are posted from other people in my stories so you know please try to sign a petition where you can post a post where you can you don't necessarily have to be out in the streets marching but you know support in any way that you can um it's it's not a a, a passing fancy it's a movement there are a lot of things that need to change in a lot of systems globally um and uh, yeah, we're trying to make sure that we get that moving. Um, Tabi3, thanks for a great conversation. I've been away because I moved. I am so happy that you came by. I'm happy that you uh, came to join the discussion. I'm going to call somebody before I leave. Mr. Harji, whatever your name is, come. Let me, let me, let me have you on my live to see what it is that you want. It's okay. Leave him. Let's let's see what Mr. Let's, let's Harji has to say. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Hey. Oh, is that your baby? Hi. Hi. How old is your baby? How old is your baby? Uh, baby. How baby. old? How old? Yes. It's a boy or a girl? It's a boy or a girl. Girl, girl. She's very pretty. Very, She's very cute. pretty. Very. Cute. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, look at her. Oh, look at her. Yeah, it's his daughter. Yeah, it's his daughter. Hmm. She's so, beautiful. Abi, sleeping. Abi. She's very beautiful. She's very beautiful. Hmm. You beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. We'll talk to you later. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Uh, okay. So that wasn't too terrible. See, that gave me the feels because there's a little cute baby in the scene. So.
I was going to cuss you, but I'm not going to cuss you. You redeemed yourself. <laughs> she was. She was super duper cute. Um, anyhow, um, it's uh, in the countdown. Um, love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next week for Wet Wednesday. Uh, look out for the new episode dropping this week. In the meantime and in between time, y'all stay safe. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Make a post. Support. Talk to you guys later.